Those highly refined carbohydrates are going to spike up your glucose, which is going to spike up your insulin. And then because you're the, the high insulin just takes all that energy and sucks it into storage, there's no energy left for you. So you eat two slices of white bread and jam in the morning, by 10.30 you're ravenous and looking for a low fat muffin. Don't fall into the trap. Yes, it's easy. No, it's not good for you. So don't break your fast the minute you get up because you're going to, to stop the body from using stored calories or body fat. If you're not hungry, why not let your body get moving first? Do something with the energy that the body is already pushing out into the bloodstream. There's no reason that you have to break it immediately and especially because most people aren't even that hungry at breakfast time. Dr. Jason Funk is a Canadian nephrologist, renowned author and advocate for intermittent fasting and low carbohydrate diets. Dr. Fang is recognized for his contribution to the understanding of insulin resistance, obesity, and type 2 diabetes. He challenges traditional approaches to managing these conditions by emphasizing the role of diet, specifically advocating for intermittent fasting and reduced carbohydrate intake. Having written several books, including The Obesity Code, the Complete Guide to Fasting and the Diabetes Code, he has become a prominent figure in the realm of metabolic health, sharing evidence-based insights and practical strategies for achieving sustainable weight loss and overall well-being. His advocacy for lifestyle interventions such as intermittent fasting has garnered attention globally, influencing the way people approach their health and challenging prevailing norms in the medical community. In today's video, we are going to delve into Dr. Fang's top three breakfast mistakes that many individuals make often unknowingly hindering their weight loss efforts. Let's begin with the first common blunder, eating too soon. The term breakfast itself, according to Dr. Jason, implies breaking the fast, emphasizing the natural fasting period that occurs during sleep. When you're not eating, your body still needs energy. So it needs to take some of the stored energy, which is calories, out from where you stored it from, which is sugar or body fat. So when you're fasting, you're using body fat. Once you start eating, your body now has a source of calories or energy and is therefore able to use that for energy and actually store some away. When you're eating, you're storing calories, when you're not eating or fasting, you're using those calories. Consider this. If you had dinner around 6 p.m. and delayed breakfast until 8 a.m., you have unintentionally embraced a 14-hour fasting window. During fasting, the body taps into stored energy, primarily from sugars or body fats. By extending this fasting period, you allow for increased fat utilization, promoting a more efficient weight loss journey. The second mistake people make with breakfast is excessive sugar consumption. Traditional breakfast foods harbor high sugar content, often from sugary cereals to fruit-laden yogurts and jams. The shift towards low-fat diets has inadvertently led to an upsurge in added sugars. To compensate for reduced fat content, Dr. Fang stresses the detrimental impact of sugar, particularly fructose, on weight gain and metabolism. Fructose mainly found in table sugar and high fructose corn syrup is metabolized predominantly by the liver, contributing to fatty liver disease and hyperinsulamia, corporates of weight gain and insulin resistance. And the sugar is very, very dangerous uh, to weight gain. And it's more than simply the amount of carbohydrates. It's in the, the way that the body metabolizes the fructose. Table sugar is a combination of glucose and fructose. Glucose is the same sugar you get with carbohydrates, such as rice and potatoes, as opposed to the fructose, which is seen in sugar and high fructose corn syrup. 
that fructose can only be metabolized by the liver and by doing that it can contribute to fatty liver disease and also to hyperinsulinemia which can cause a lot of weight gain in addition to the insulin resistance so the sugar is much worse for you than just the regular uh, carbohydrates lastly the third breakfast mistakes involves the overconsumption of processed and refined carbohydrates convenience often drives breakfast choices leading to easily accessible and non-perishable options however these refined carbs present in items like white bread and pastries can spike glucose levels subsequently elevating insulin and promoting energy storage rather than utilization dr fang advocates for a return to traditional breakfast foods such as eggs meats and slow cooked oats emphasizing their nutritional benefit over processed alternatives slow cooked oats not the instant ones that we have which are highly sugar but the old oats yes they're carbohydrates but there's a lot of fiber in them the glycemic index isn't that low it's not that highly refined so those traditional traditional breakfast foods are okay and if it's too difficult because you don't have time to eat breakfast you don't have to put something in your mouth immediately. You can break your fast any time. So don't worry about it. It's okay to skip that immediate eating on waking up and let your body just continue to use up some of the energy. Breaking these three common breakfast habits, eating too soon, indulging in excessive sugar, and relying on refined carbs can pave the way for a healthier and a more effective weight management journey. Dr. Fang suggests a mindful approach to breakfast, focusing on whole traditional foods and challenging the misconception that immediate morning eating is mandatory. So whether you choose to enjoy breakfast at 7 a.m., 9 a.m. or even noon, remember that your body will adapt and making informed choices can positively impact your overall well-being. It's important to note that Dr. Fang's recommendations are often aligned with principles of intermittent fasting which involves periods of eating and fasting. While these three mistakes are commonly discussed, individual dietary needs may vary and it's always advisable to consult with a healthcare professional before making significant changes to one's diet. Reducing your sugar intake is a crucial step toward promoting overall health and well-being. Consider the adverse effects associated with excessive added sugar consumption. While occasional indulgence is acceptable, adopting a lifestyle that minimizes sugar intake is beneficial. Here are some practical tips to help you cut back on added sugar and embrace a healthier diet. Opt for water or unsweetened seltzer instead of sodas, energy drinks, sweetened tea, and juices. This simple swap significantly reduces your daily sugar intake. Enjoy your coffee without added sugars or consider using natural sweetness for a healthier caffeine fix. Revamp yogurt with fresh berries. Choose plain yogurt and sweeten it naturally with fresh or frozen berries, steering clear of pre-flavored sugar-loaded options. Whole fruits over smoothies. Opt for whole fruits rather than sugar-sweetened fruit smoothies to benefit from the fiber and nutrients present in the whole fruits. Substitute sweet salad dressing with a mix of olive oil and vinegar to enhance the flavor of your salads without unnecessary sugar. Choose marinades, nut butter, ketchup, and marinara sauce with zero added sugars to maintain a nutritious and a low sugar diet. Look for cereals, granola, 
and granola bars with minimal sugar content, ideally under 4 grams per serving. Nutrient packed breakfast alternatives replace sugar cereals with a bowl of rolled oats topped with nut butter and fresh berries or indulge in a nutritious omelette with fresh greens. Choose banana instead of jelly. Slice fresh bananas onto your peanut butter sandwich as a delicious and natural alternative to sugar jelly. Avoid alcoholic beverages sweetened with soda, juice, honey, sugar or agave to reduce hidden sugar intake. The most effective way to limit added sugar intake is by preparing your meals at home, emphasizing whole, unprocessed ingredients and steering clear of high sugar packaged foods. By incorporating these practical tips into your daily routine and making mindful food choices, you can take control of your sugar intake and foster a healthier lifestyle. You may also choose to skip breakfast. This implies adopting an eating strategy known as intermittent fasting. The concept of intermittent fasting is the restriction of eating to a specific time window, often around 8 hours, while abstaining from food for the remaining 16 or more hours of the day and night. Another intermittent fasting method involves alternating between days of regular calorie intake and days with significantly reduced calorie consumption. Multiple studies suggest that individuals who opt to forego breakfast may not face an increased risk of weight gain. In fact, some evidence indicates that they might experience advantage in terms of weight loss and enhanced fat burning. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned something. If you did, click the like button, share it with a friend, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on our next video. Stay blessed.